Hi, friends. We're on the series, Made to Order. Tomorrow will be our last message on that, and we'll move on to another series. But today I want to give you a second part on, and that's an order. Say it, and that's an order. If uh, a police officer drew his gun and said, stop in the name of the law, and that's an order, you better get your hands in the air and obey the police officer. Or if a colonel or a major in the military said, son, young man, that's an order. You better salute and do what he tells you to do. Well, if, it's that, if that's true in the military, then how much more in the kingdom of God? A child of God full of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus points at the devil and says, listen, that's an order. You have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Things happen. So let me look at some points today. We're talking about order, or getting your life uh, uh, in order, and getting the mess out of your life. If you're still living in a mess age, then this mess age is not for you. You know, there's the ice age, the stone age, bronze age. There's also a mess age, uh, and we're living in a mess age. And until you get your inner world and your outer world under the authority of Christ, it's impossible for you to move in authority. Second, apprenticeship always precedes apostleship. You're an apprentice before you're an apostle. There are two Greek words in Paul's day for son. One is huias, which is a mature adult son, a son in authority. The other is technon. We get the word technique, technical, even tech school. Listen, a child of God must go to spiritual tech school before he grows up to be a huias. In other words, apprenticeship before apostleship. A man entrusts his beloved wife with his checkbook. Why? Because he thinks she's going to look after the family's best interest. He doesn't give his checkbook to an embezzler. Well, it's the same way in the kingdom. If you prove that you're faithful in that which is little, then you become lord of that which is much. Or could I say if you're faithful with a mop, you might be able to be faithful to handle the scepter of the kingdom. It was that way with David. He was faithful out in the pasture with his father's flock with a, a, a rod and a staff in his hand, and then ultimately God put the scepter of the kingdom of Israel in his hand. Praise God. And then third, you've taken orders. Now it's time for you to give some orders. Somebody says, wow, I've been waiting for this. That's what I want. I've been wanting to give orders for a long time. I'm not talking about arrogance. Just on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's people that have paid the price, been obedient to the Lord, but they don't step up to the plate. They're shy. Like Moses, when he said, you go down to Pharaoh and you speak for me and say, and that's an order. And yet Moses, rather than doing that, started making excuses. I'm not eloquent. Send to Aaron. Or you think of Gideon when he said, I'm the least in my father's house. Or Jeremiah when he said, I'm just a child. I can't speak. I'm asking you to square your shoulders and you've received orders. Now it's time to start giving orders. Number uh, four, your status in the kingdom is that of a ruling king, not a pampered prince. You know, when you think, you, the Bible doesn't call us princes. It calls us kings. We're made kings and priests unto our God. He is the king of kings. He's the big king. We're little kings. You know, a prince is a pampered person. A prince sits around and waits for the king to die so that he can take over his throne. Well, let me tell you, Jesus already died. He rose from the dead. So don't put it off. Right now, Romans 5 and 17 says you're to reign in life by Jesus Christ. Take your rightful dominion. And when a king speaks, listen, Proverbs 16 and verse 10, a divine sentences in the lips of a king. And Ecclesiastes 8 and 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. That means authority. Number five, let's close with this. When a king says, that's an order, that's an order. Now there's a difference between a judge and a king. When a judge strikes the desk with his gavel and says, order in the court. Now we're talking about divine order. Order in the court. It proves to me he's already lost order. But a king never strikes a gavel. He just gives a stare, raises his eyebrow. Or at least that's what it says in Proverbs 20 and verse 8. Listen, a king who sits in the throne of judgment scatters away all evil with his eyes. In other words, he just lifts his eyes and people scatter. Well, you as a child of God, you're under authority. You have authority. Authority. So rather than smacking the gavel and screaming and rebuking and carrying on, why don't you just take the dominion, turn the keys of the kingdom of God, realize you're under order, and then give the order. And hey, that's an order. Hope you're enjoying this series. It's been a blessing. Tune in tomorrow. We have more. And uh, I want you to have a great day in the Lord, okay? See you tomorrow with Through the Prism of Chrism.